you know, before I speak, I, I've drunk about three pints already this morning. It's crazy. Of water. Yeah, not of anything else. <laughs> Stuart shouting of water. Water, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, my title this morning is Pray for One Another. And um, what a brilliant series of one another. It takes our eyes off ourselves and fixes our eyes on Jesus. And from that relationship with Jesus, we are able, when we're filled up, we're able to look outwards and bless one another from the overflow. Do you know, praying for someone is such a privilege. And speaking to Jesus is a privilege. And the creator of the universe listens to us. He listens to us. He listens to you and I. And his ear is inclined and it's attuned towards us. Yvonne's going like that just now. And that's what Jesus does. He's active. He listens. He's inclined and attuned towards us. His heart is for us. And when he lifts up his countenance upon us, it's a smile. It's not a frown. It's a smile. He smiles on us because we delight him. Whether we feel we might be in sin or we're, we're on the periphery or we're on the edge, you delight Jesus because you're made in his image. We're made in the image of God. So hold on to that, that Jesus smiles upon you. Praying for someone is a privilege and it's also a responsibility. It changes our focus from us to them and it turns our eyes and our heart back to Jesus. It recenters and realigns us. I've learned over the years and often the hard way to pray for those who have hurt me. Probably so the authority of, of that offense can be broken. I've also learned to release people through prayer and to become, to almost become like their intercessor. And usually when it's the last thing I want to do. I've learned to pray until negativity breaks. And that does, that's not instant, that can take time. But persevere because Jesus loves to hear your prayers. And the answers to these prayers are not, not instant. They're not always instant. They can take time. They can take even years. But he hears. And I think knowing that he hears lets me, wants, encourages me to keep going and to keep praying. Do you know, we are custodians of the presence of God. And we have responsibility to guard and to protect his presence by guarding our hearts and keeping our hearts pure. Because then he can flow through us to one another. When we pray for, for one another, we reduce each other's burdens, and we all need prayer. And sometimes I think we hesitate to ask for prayer because we don't want to appear weak, or we don't want to feel like we're putting too much on someone. But so many of us are here today and know Jesus today because someone consistently prayed for our salvation. If Stuart's mom and dad hadn't consistently prayed for him, he wouldn't be here today. Um, so who can you pray for? Who needs your prayers? Because we all need prayer. Children need prayer. Youth need prayer. Marriages need prayer. Business needs prayer. Every age and generation needs prayer and needs breakthrough. So why, if we've been entrusted with this responsibility to pray, why do we pray for one another? I think one of the, the first reasons um, that I felt was, we, the first thing is against danger, because we're in danger whether we know it or not. The devil is our adversary, and he does prowl around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour and deceive. But God is waiting, and he's looking and longing to show himself strong on our behalf. And praying for one another is a strong protection and defense against the devil's schemes, against his temptations, and against his lies. So we pray for one another to prevent danger or to deliver us from danger. In Luke 22, 31 and 32, Jesus is speaking to Simon. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to have all of you to sift you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me um, again, strengthen and build up your brothers. And the message translation puts it really clearly. It says, Simon, stay on your toes. Satan has tried his best to separate all of you like chaff from wheat. Simon, I've prayed for you in particular that you not give in or give out. Jesus prayed for Peter, that he, that, for Simon Peter, that he would withstand Satan's temptations and plans. So let's please pray protection over one another that our faith wouldn't fail. And the second reason when I was thinking, it's four Ds this morning, um, to pray for one another against discouragement. 
looking at the, the early church in Corinth from 2 Corinthians 1, 8 to 11. It says, I think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and completely overwhelmed, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we learned not only to rely on ourselves, but on God who can raise the dead. And he did deliver us from mortal danger. And we are confident that we will he will continue to deliver us. He will rescue us because you are helping by praying for us. As a result, many will give thanks to God because so, because so many people's prayers for our safety have been answered. You know, like many of us just now, the Corinthians felt crushed, overwhelmed, in despair. But God rescued them as a result of people's prayers. God's continued protection and deliverance is on people because of the prayers of others. And we need to pray for one another. When you think of someone, pray for them. When you think of someone, pray for them. For God's protection, for his blessing. God often moves or doesn't move because someone prayed for them. And be that someone for someone else. It's almost like a baton, like passing it on. And the answered prayer for the Corinthian safety caused many to give thanks. Answered prayer is a testimony. Share it. Share the testimony. People's um, faith is encouraged when testimony is shared. And one of our boys um, had a bit of bother on his hand. He's, he gets really sore skin. And out of nothing, he got warts. And he got, I think it grew to about four or five in lockdown. And then we, um, we didn't get anywhere with the things the doctor gave us. And then it, on one hand, he said, Mum, do you look, Mum, I've got more. I think we counted about 24. And they went right up his arm. So we started to pray because he'd experienced a bit of cruelty from other kids. We got the, the treatment we needed. Um, but over time, they were, it wasn't, wasn't, nothing was happening. So we continued to pray and pray. And then alongside taking stuff for it, we looked at his hand the other day and ha for a fact, he's got no warts on his hand, nothing at all. And that's a miracle because nothing was shifting it. God is faithful. Answer prayer is a testimony. So how many people in life are discouraged? This has been a, a tough season. It's been an arduous season. And we need to pray for each other. Lift each other's arms up. You know, Zara said something brilliant earlier. She said about community, that we're built for community. And we're built from community. Lift one another up in the place of prayer so we can help and share one another's burdens. Going back to Luke 22, 32, Jesus pleaded in prayer for Peter that his faith shouldn't fail. You know, we can try everything. We can fast, we can pray alone, we can come to every service and we can question our faith, but invite others in, be vulnerable, allow others to pray for you and you pray for them, for everyone's straight in faith to be strengthened and to become robust. It's humbling to ask people to pray for you because it makes us vulnerable, but it breaks down the walls and allows others in and we need each other. We do need each other. And that's why these men's and ladies meetings are going to be great because we can sit around a table and chat, let the walls come down. Number three, the other D is pray for our dreams and desires. Who knows God has got good plans for us? Jeremiah, yeah, yeah, he does have good plans. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 a verse we're all familiar with. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good and not for disaster. Plans to give you a future and a hope. God is God and everything he does is for our good. And even if something bad happens, he's going to work it together for our good, even if it doesn't feel like that at the time. Please hold on to that hope. God, God loves you. He's got a plan for your life, a plan for your life. St let's stay in our own lanes and run the race marked for us. Bring others alongside us in their lanes and cheer one another on. But the devil also has desires for us. And we need to pray that God's desires will come to pass. And they'll be our desires too. In, in Acts 13, 1 to 3, Barnabas and Saul are sent out. And the Holy Spirit instructed Barnabas and um, instructed, dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work that I've called them to. There was work for Saul and Barnabas that God had already uh, designed for them and desired and assigned for them to do. It says, so after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. You know, for each one of us, God has got specific special work which he calls us to do. But the work for Saul and Barnabas required prayer, it needs a prayer for us too. The men laid their hands on them and prayed for them before they were sent out. There needs to be prayers, church, so that God's desires for you and for me will come to pass. 
Jesus said to Simon Peter, he said to Peter, you're the rock and in you I will build my church. But Satan also had a plan and he planned to sift Peter, to separate him, but to ensure that God's desires for him would not come to fruition. But we need to pray um, that God's desires for us and for each other, for one another, will come to fruition and will come to pass. It's our prayers which are going to stop the process of whatever Satan has put in place, what he's put in motion. Um, Number four is pray against disease. Some here are ill this morning and sick and are believing God for healing and for breakthrough. And you know, I say for all of us, we stand with each other. We stand with you. Don't be discouraged yourself. James 5.14 says, if someone is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and they will pray for him. And when we hear of someone who's sick, it's not a topic of discussion, but it's someone we pray for and someone we pray with. The prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. And as we come together in corporate prayer, it makes power available because we're agreeing. There's, there's power in agreement. Prayer will bring healing. It will bring restoration and it will bring deliverance and it will bring freedom. And that's not just to people here. That's at home too, if you're watching online. There's power in prayer. Who believes there's power in prayer? Come on. So Acts 9, 36 to 40. This is speaking about Dorcas. There was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About this time, she became ill and she died. Her friends prepared her for burial and laid her in an upstairs room, but they had heard that Peter was nearby at Lydda. I think that's how you pronounce it. So they sent two men in to beg him, please come as soon as possible. So Peter returned with them, and as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and other garments Dorcas had made for them. But Peter asked them all to leave the room. Then he knelt and prayed. Turning to the body, he said, get up, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and he helped her up. Then he called in the widows and all the believers and he showed them that she was alive. The the, The news raced through the whole town and many believed in the Lord. You know, sharing testimony and, and strengthens our faith and our resolve and it re- renews hope and turns many to Jesus. Let's be ready to share our testimony. Let's be ready to tell of what Jesus, not of what he did, but what he's doing. What is Jesus doing in your life now? What is he doing that's fresh? What, how is he touching you? How is he challenging you? How is he preparing you? How is he preparing us? Peter prayed for Dorcas and it was his prayers and words of faith and command that brought her back to life. But they waited for Peter, despite having the power to pray themselves. Guess what, guys? We don't need to wait. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We can pray for anyone, anytime, anywhere. God can revive and heal anyone in body, emotions, in mind, in spirit and heart through whose prayers? Through our prayers for one another. Remember, we are custodians of God, of the presence of God, and we are the vessels of the Holy Spirit. We are who he's going to use. We can pray. God can turn any and every situation around. He is the turnaround God. He's turned my life around from the inside out, upside down. He's shaken it and molded it and conformed it and pressed it and crushed it at times. But guess what? He's a God of complete transformation. And I want to live to give him testimony with every breath I've got until I've not got any breath left. He can turn every situation around. Nothing is impossible, church. We love and we partner with the God of Ephesians 3.20. Now glory be to God by his mighty power. It's not us. It's not us in our striving. It's not us in our flesh. It's his mighty power at work within us. He is able. Tell me who's able. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we could ever dare to ask or hope. It's not us. It's all him. It's his work at work within us. We are the carriers. We are the conduits, the vessels. So dare to have this this faith, this audacious faith. I dare you. Because it's God's heart that we live whole, we live healed, we live strong and full of faith and not lacking any good thing. Life in its fullness, bless you, abundant life. That's God's desire. He wants the best for us. But in Acts 9, they waited for someone else. They waited for Peter. Don't wait. 
Situations change because people prayed. You can pray and I can pray and it's relational and it's conversational. It's not complicated and full of complicated, convoluted words and phrases. It's heart to heart with our best friend. And um, so often I thought it was about my perfection. But a friend wrote a beautiful song recently that summed it up for me. I thought, it says, I thought perfect was your preference. Turns out perfect's not your reference. Do you know, God takes our pieces. He takes our brokenness and our weakness and he uses it and he works with them. He blesses our weakness, our weaknesses, and it's what he needs and he uses it. He uses our prayers and our prayers for one another, which can seem so small and weak and insignificant, but he uses them to turn whole situations around. It's not about us striving for perfection because Jesus is our perfection and God accepts us through Jesus. So please allow him to use what's in our hands and what's in our heart. He'll fill the gaps. He'll do it. You can pray. You can pray and he will listen. But the gaps, the gaps can sometimes feel so overwhelming. But I remember years ago being taught the gaps, God answers prayers. You know, we all need to pray. The world is a turbulent place at the moment. There's gaps all over the place. Put prayer at the forefront of what we do, especially right now, because we need one another and we need one another's prayers. We don't need to leave it to the intercessors. We can all pray. Jesus hears, and it doesn't have to be long and striving. One minute, 30 seconds. If you see someone in the street, pray for them. We are dismantlers of the dark, and Jesus is, will use our prayers against the darkness to destroy it and to dismantle it. And there's no denying the power of prayer or the potency of prayer. There's power in prayer. There's power in praying for one another. And Elijah, he was a man of prayer. In James 5, 17 to 18, it says there had been no rain for three and a half years. He prayed earnestly, Elijah prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, and it didn't. And then he prayed for rain, and down it poured, like a Scottish summer, down it poured. The Bible tells us that Elijah was a man just like you and I. His prayer was fervent and earnest, and it had great results. Elijah knew he had authority, and he stepped into that authority. He commanded the rain to fall. And, and just, we need each other's prayers. We need to pray for one another, and pray for people until they're free, and pray and love them out of captivity. Pray for their, he- for their freedom. Pray for healing. Pray for their health. Pray for their relationship with Jesus to be on fire and to be all-consuming. Because the devil does, there is an enemy and he does prowl around. Pray for people to withstand. Pray for sound mind. And Zara spoke this morning about our hearts anchored. Pray for hearts anchored to Jesus and eyes fixed on Jesus. Because prayer is powerful. We can't deny the power of prayer. There's a story about Elon Musk, the billionaire, who was a man who didn't confess to have any faith in any, any God. But um, he was praying to be able to take people to space. He had a lot riding on it, as he, so he prayed for the successful lodging and landing of his spaceship. And he's an unbeliever, he's a maverick, a man with a brilliant mind. But if he could believe in the power of prayer and testify about it, how much more can we? How much more you and I? Jesus had great plans for Peter, but so did the enemy. He says in Luke 22, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to have all of you to sift you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So if Jesus pleaded in prayer, we should too. Jesus had great plans for Peter because he knew what he wanted to use Peter to do. So when Jesus knew what the devil had planned for Peter, what did he do? He prayed for him. So praying for someone, is, I think it's one of the kindest, most selfless things we can do. When we pray for, for one another, we'll see tremendous things happen. And as I said, it doesn't need to be long, long prayers. Let's just be front-footed in our prayers because we need it. Pray for one another and remember one another. And I really believe that we'll see great things happen, not just in our own lives, but in the lives of our children, in the lives of our grandchildren, in our marriages, in our businesses, in our careers and our friendships. We'll begin to see results. The Bible says in James 5, 16, the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And um, I just love that word, availeth. The word availeth means to produce an advantage or to serve in a useful way. 
And the original Greek word translated as availeth means is able, is capable or has the power. And the righteous person is, who, is the man or woman who has been made right with God, the one whose sins are forgiven. So the one who's forgiven and in right standing with God can pray in a useful, advantageous, powerful way and receive excellent results. And successful prayer comes from Christians who passionately desire to see God's will worked out and fulfilled in their lives and the lives of those they're praying for. Can you imagine us collectively and for one another praying effectual and effective prayers? Tremend as we've read, tremendous power has been made available to the righteous person. That's you and that's me. So my prayer today is that God will give us the grace to pray and the heart to pray for one another. Ourselves too, but for one another. See, we need intercessors, but we also need to pray for each other. We read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, pray continually, keep on praying. And I hope that's not an intimidating um, phrase, but we pray continually by just being ready to turn anything into a prayer. It doesn't mean that we pray, pray, pray continually when we're at work, but it means being conscious of the Holy Spirit within and commune with them and be aware and be ready to turn anything into prayer. Isn't our access, we've got access to Jesus. We've got access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our access is beautiful. For example, if I'm going for an appointment, I pray for that appointment. Or if I'm out walking in God's creation or looking at the creation that Aaron's been up the hills, um, I thank God for his beautiful creation. Thank God for, for just by trying to cultivate a mindset so that everything I see and everything I feel and every thought I have is somehow Godward in a sense. It all comes back to God. Think, think of it all in terms of its connection with God because that will prompt us to say thank you or I pray for this person or I pray for that friend. It's all Godward. It's all back and centered to him. It allows us to ask for forgiveness for what we've been thinking or it means we're constantly aware of the presence of God and consciously communicating with him. So church, be ready to pray. Be just a heartbeat away from being ready to pray about anything and everything in which we find ourselves and particularly for one another. And in a minute or two, we're going to pray with and pray for and stand with one another. We're going to stand together in unity and pray in groups of two, three or four. We're going to pray for one another. Tell each other your needs and have faith that Jesus hears your prayers and is already working on your behalf. God is for you. God loves you. God smiles on you and he's got you in groups to pray for things that arise. Pray for healing people need healing. Pray for, for if people need a job. Pray for your children and your grandchildren. Pray for, for, a rest, for people who need restoration, people who need peace, people who need forgiven, people who need financial breakthrough. But let's lift up our voices and stand together and be concerned for one another and pray for one another in the name of Jesus. Agree with each other in your prayers because there's power and unity in agreement. We read in Matthew 18, 19 and 20, I also tell you this, if two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together because they are mine, I am there among them. He's here. Jesus is here this morning. So whatever it is we're believing the living God for, we're going to stand together as a church, as brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're going to agree Pray fervent prayers. Pray earnest and effective prayers. And if you can't pray, that's okay. Just ask for prayer. Come down to the front and ask for prayer and we'll pray for you individually. If you'd like personal prayer, come forward and one of the elders, if we can have the pastoral leadership team ready, one of us will pray for you. Um, so if I can have, if you guys just form groups of three or four, um, um, well, Ruben, if you could put that song on, please. And just pray, pray as the Holy Spirit leads. Yeah, Reuben, thank you. And if you want personal prayer, we'll come, come down to the front and we'll pray for you.